I'm Dave Dinkle and thanks for joining me for this ongoing video series of actual recent deals. This is an example of a $9,821.80 profit with only $38 and an earnest money deposit invested. Virtually no money in the deal. The following is a real estate deal that was actually recently completed by a student. The deal exemplifies some of the various aspects of how to do these transactions. So as not to embarrass anyone involved in the transactions, all parties have been kept anonymous. As always, I'm not an attorney, CPA, or realtor, and any information derived or found in this presentation should not be construed as legal or accounting advice. What you're going to see is an example of a double closing with the first leg, or A to B, done with a student using partner's financing. Turned out to be for hard money rates, but nonetheless he had a partner. Seller A, bank owned, this is an REO property, sells to buyer B, which is our student, who then sells it to buyer C, the end buyer, who in this case was an individual. Not all REOs have deed restrictions. This is one that didn't have it. No money in the deal. Student got the money from a partner. No credit. No conventional lender involved. No risk, since he had no money in the deal himself. And the partner backed out originally, but came back because of the liens being taken by the end buyer. Student's first deal, what I did is I actually decided to go ahead and use the student's own words, because they're sort of very interesting as you'll see. So this was the student's first deal and he said it was the most stressful deal he ever had as he's done a number of them since then he can talk from experience. It was an REO that no one wanted because it had accumulated over thirty two thousand dollars in liens. Now in our realm of liens that's not a giant one. We've had them in the million dollar category on houses that weren't worth a hundred thousand. He remembered that I always said when everybody else runs go in and he did he remembers going in to see the war house and it looked like a bomb shelter it had been torn apart on the inside. Scrap anything in there had been carried out. But he already had it under contract for 32500 This is not uncommon. We make blind offers. Once we know we're going to get the property under contract or have it under contract, then we go and see what we've got. Otherwise, we'd lose it to another investor and we can always renegotiate, as you will see in a moment. After seeing it, he renegotiated for $22,000, $10,500 reduction, and he got it. Now remember, this is an REO selling well below the listing price, which may not be what you're hearing in your area. He had over 30 calls on this property, but as soon as everybody saw the lien search, they ran. And that's unusual because these are amateurs. A good investor would have, or a seasoned investor would have been in there all over. After much debate, we insisted we were going to risk our deposit because I just had the feeling it was going to work. That gut feeling cannot be productive in some cases. I'm conservative, but in this case you'll see it worked out. I think what was important is the comment by the student that if he lost the thousand dollars he would have zero in his bank account. And that was extremely stressful for himself at the time. When it came time to close, however, he still had no buyers. We were trying to get a power of attorney from the seller, this is the bank, to try and mitigate the liens before the closing. It's very unusual for a bank to allow that happen. They frankly just don't care. Also, if you give a power of attorney, then the, in this case, the student buyer would actually have authorization from the lender to work on their behalf. Very unusual for it to happen. Actually, I've never seen it done. The seller agreed initially, uh, but at the last second he bailed out and said he wouldn't give it to us. Probably was a new asset manager when he asked his boss. His boss said, what are you, crazy? So after fighting with the realtor and pushing for extension after extension, the seller, the bank, finally said no more. Now look at this, extension after extension. For you guys who are saying REOs, they never give an extension. You know they're going to give an extension because they have a per diem charge in their contract. They wouldn't have a per diem charge if, in fact, they weren't going to give an extension if they felt there was a valid reason for it. So by this time, they had plenty of buyers, but we had to mitigate the liens for them to take it. So what they decided to do is go ahead and close, fix the liens with the city's amnesty program, and then sell it for $50,000. Expected to make some real money for it. Fix and close and fix the liens could have cost another ten or fifteen thousand dollars, and it may not have been able to sell for fifty. But it was the vision they had, and moving forward, I think they pretty much changed their mind, as you'll see in a moment. The actual day of closing, the student's partner backed out and said he would not fund the deal simply because the bank was giving them a quick claim deed. 
That means the bank was literally saying we will have no responsibility for the property whatsoever. Now typically the bank always gives a restricted warranty deed or limited warranty deed which is nearly as good as a quit claim deed to them because it says only during the time that we owned it are we responsible for anything that happened to it. In addition they generally have you sign a hold harmless agreement as part of their addendum and they cover themselves so if you come back and say nah 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 you didn't tell me about this they're going to say it doesn't matter read your contract this is contract law it's pretty much black and white after convincing his partner about the amnesty program he ended up funding the deal the morning after they were supposed to close and the bank went ahead and closed these amnesty programs are gigantic money makers for us stay in touch with the city that you're in or the county find out if they're going to have an amnesty program coming and work those into your deals especially deals you're looking at where they have huge liens attached everybody else is running from them at any rate they finally found a woman buyer by on a f through a FISBO sign outside the house who loved the property and wanted it and she f said she'd pay thirty eight thousand dollars remember they have it at twenty two five thirty eight looks pretty good he told her the only way he would consider selling it to her though is if she would take it with the liens this is very common and when he does the B to C transaction what he has to do is have her sign a hold harmless agreement many of the wholesalers in parts of the country as a standard operating procedure have the end buyer sign a hold harmless agreement to start with so they had to call their contractor and have him stop what was scheduled for a demolition of a wall that the city said they would consider negotiating the liens if they did certain things to the property one of which was an added wall cities don't like added walls because they consider them a safety hazard if the fire department has to come in and they can't find their way through a myriad of small rooms in one of these houses that's been cut up into extra bedrooms. So we locked it up with her and explained to her how to mitigate the fines. This is very important. You need your end buyer to go to the city with you preferably and get a comfort level that this is going to happen just the way you've told them. It's it's a deal closer for you. Well she went to the city and came back crying because the city told her they reduced four of them to 10% of the amount, but one of them they'd only take 50% for. So it turned out that that was about $6,000 over her budget. So it's not a deal killer yet, and the option here is go ahead and do all the work yourself, pull permits, wait for a buyer, and so on. So they ended up splitting the difference with her, so it sold for 35000 This was his first deal, and it makes for a good story. And he said in his original email to me that he had an upset stomach for two weeks after this because it was so stressful for him. But that can happen in real estate and investing if you let it happen to you. His risk in this deal, even though that thousand dollar earnest money deposit was critical to him at the time, was really limited to that exposure. So here's the HUD-1 closing statement for the A to B transaction, page one. I hope you can see these numbers pretty well. There's the $22,500 price the student was paying for the property. Again, seller gets the same price. These are the closing costs from page two, which we're going to see for the student buyer. Left side, always the buy side. Sell side, always on the right side. Now you'll see that the student on here uh, put up what looks like a $2,000 deposit. However, his partner put up $1,000 of the $2,000 deposit. And his, his partner put a uh, $20,000 note on the property, which is right here, as part of the closing cost, the money that was needed. Now this is... I brought this up a second ago, but these are the closing costs for the seller from page two, which we're going to see. As you can see, it's $3,500, while it's only a little over 1000 for a student. These are, again, the uh, county taxes that are due, and as you can see, they're always going to be the same. They're a credit to the buyer and a debit to the seller. So here's the bottom line. The student had to come up with $37 at closing, and the seller collected what looks like $16,000. doesn't matter. The seller is the lender. So here's page two of the HUD, and we're going to look and see who got what. First of all, there's a $2,000 commission to the agent. $2,000 over $22,500 sounds an awful lot like over 9% commission. Now, his buddy that loaned him money, his partner, charged him three points up front, or about $600, and he had some additional charges for him, uh, the note preparation and another junk fee involved in it. So here's the attorney's closing costs. They're usual and typical and abstract title or abstract or title search. 
these are just the usual closing costs you're going to run into and you can see what they are here if you want to take the time they're incidental compared to what we're looking at they're just absolutely incidental now these are utilities that weren't paid to do to, to the city for a certain time period then a second time period again incidental charges this is what the student had to pay about looks like about fifteen hundred dollars and the largest amount of this three thousand dollars that the seller had to pay was the two thousand dollar commission to the agent so let's look at where the money is this is the closing statement for the b to c side this is page one of course there's the thirty five thousand dollar sale price that he renegotiated with the end buyer from thirty eight thousand to split the difference on the liens the overage that she was over six thousand so half of that's three thousand buyer and the seller the buyer is the end buyer, the student is the seller in this case, and here's the end buyer's closing cost, $747. Now, this particular HUD statement has the county taxes actually put in a different part of the HUD. Typically, they're down below in this section. And they're $248, roughly. This is the closing cost from page 2 for the seller, which was the student in this case. We're going to look and see why there's so much money. They're $3,000. Here's the payoff of the note to his partner, and that's the end buyer's deposit of $5,000. Now, once again, what the student did is he had the ability to get a larger deposit than he had up. So if, in the event that the end buyer flaked out at the last minute, the C buyer, she would have lost her $5,000 deposit. And if he couldn't close, he would have lost his $2,000 deposit, half of which was his and half of which was his partner's. So they still would have made $3,000 on the transaction. So here's the bottom line. The buyer had to bring in $30,994, and our seller got $11,858.91. Now remember, this includes the refund of his deposit. So we're going to take that into account by reducing his profit from 11000 to 9000 All right, so here is uh, page two. We can look at what these costs are. Here's the uh, settlement or closing cost and the abstract or title fee. And this is the actual title insurance. And these are the miscellaneous costs that we always talk about being, whatever they are. Here, more importantly, is real estate taxes due, the lien search, and a stormwater utility bill. Now, this is the same one. So the student had to bring in $3,000, predominantly because of the real estate taxes being paid, which were not paid by the original seller. And also the end buyer had only to bring in $747.75. The final result of this transaction was the student purchased the property off the MLS as an REO. The deal had fallen through before because other investors simply had passed on it with $37,000 in outstanding liens, which were more than the price the lender was trying to get for the property. The student put it under contract and later got a price reduction that made the deal end his profit in the deal. While he had over 30 offers on the property, everyone ran when they saw the lien issues. Again, these are not pros. Serious investors would look into the liens. Money is in solving the liens. The more the issues, the more the money ultimately. Now not every deal can be negotiated for the liens. Some of them you have to walk away from, but if you don't look at all of them, you're not gonna find out what really makes them tick. He would have been virtually penniless, according to him, if he'd lost his deposit. His buyer put up a $5,000 earnest money deposit, and had she not closed, he would have made 3,000, because he would have lost his deposit of 1000 plus his partner's $1,000 deposit. So the student's net profit for the $37 he had to bring to closing, plus his $1,000 out-of-pocket deposit money, was $9,821.81 after paying back his hard money loan. Thanks very much for joining me. Looking forward to talking to you next time around.